So I'm excited about this book. This is The Scourge of the Scorn Lords, Meatlandia, book three. And there's the cover, as you can see. Here's the spine, it's about 100 pages. And it's designed for old school essentials. It says, introducing the third and final installment of the Meatlandia trilogy. Now, this is the first time I've ever seen anything about Meatlandia. Um, I have played old school essentials before and I enjoyed it. It's a great, great BX. Um, clone it's probably the best one out there it says included within 100 pages of mind-bending wasteland surviving post-apocalyptic old school aussiness it has the lands the scorn lands the scorn lords which i'll talk about psionics there's new classes vehicles and animals a ton of monsters and a bunch of tables which i did notice that it's by night owl publishing this was a successful kickstarter and this is the book so nice hardback book it feels good i like the font i like the, the silver of the words there and i will say that um, I like this book a lot. It, uh, it's definitely got some cool stuff going for it. Um, and we're going to go through it here. So right off the back, it's bad. It's got vehicle mayhem. So it, it tells you, it tells you pretty much how to roll up a vehicle. So what type of vehicle it is. And it can be a lot of crazy stuff like a tricycle, a sledge, a coffin, a buggy, a giant seashell. And then how does it move? It could be pulled by horses, mules, elephants, terror birds, triceratops, a uh, whole bunch of lists here, how many of them pull it, what type armament it has. This is kind of on the end papers here, which is pretty cool. And then it's got the speed, carrying capacity, how it's decorated. And then when it kind of, when it hits stuff, vehicle, vehicular mayhem, and then when it breaks down, what happens to it. So cool little end pages there. Um, but obviously you can tell from the front, there's some vehicles and stuff. And I'll tell you more, obviously, of the, the kind of theme that it has. But um, let's keep going here. Nice, new, and crisp pages. Um, so it's got some information here talking about how it, it's best used with the Chaos Gods Come to Meet Landia. It's another one of their books that they made. I do not have that book, um, so I can't really attest to a lot of that stuff. There's another book called Worm Witch, The Life and Death of Belinda Blood. I don't have that either. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever seen this, but my first viewing here, this I'm, I'm, it's intriguing. I, I think this is pretty neat. And I do like how it has a lot of information here about how they made the book, like um, what, what program was used and title and heading and stuff. So there's some information for you. Table of contents. We're not going to go over that too much. So, poetry. so the scourge and, uh, of the scorn lords. So one thing that's cool about this is obviously this takes, you know, a lot of um, inspiration from like Dune. I would say Dark Sun. Uh, there's a whole list in another book that's going to tell you a bunch of stuff. Mad Max, of course, plays a huge role into it. Um, but I like how it says, like, do you, do you need the other books? And it says, no, you definitely don't need them. They would, of course, help and, uh, stuff like that. So I like the size of it. Obviously it's going to go well with the old school essentials books. And, um, it's going to go right into telling you about the scorn land. So this is obviously a very desolate, uh, desert like area. There's these chaos storms that wreak havoc upon Meatlandia, which I like the name Meatlandia. That's funny. I'd like to know more about it with the other book. Um, so it has connections with, I guess, some of the other lands it talks to you about it here and how to deal with it. See here, uh, connecting characters from the other books, some of the NPCs that are in there, obviously. Um, and then there's like a forging table, I guess, kind of for the some of the character classes that are is in one of the other books. So here's one of our first pieces of art. And it's kind of, it looks to me like very kind of, uh, I know it's, it's a little bit modern, but it's also a little bit old school. So it's kind of like a cool mixture of the two. Um, I don't mind it at all. I think it's cool. I think there's a lot of cool pieces in it. Uh, but you can see here, I love the I love the, the font that's used for the headings and stuff like that. Very much is going to meld well with that old school essential. So one thing I like right off the bat, of course, it's got dehydration and especially how to deal with animals, these sandstorms. And that's one thing that a lot of post-apocalyptic games don't do, which is strange, is they don't have like rules for dehydration or they don't really focus on it more, you know, very much. But I, I do like that it's in here and how that affects your character. Um, there's something called scorn struck that happens to you. And like I said, I'm not going to give you everything about it, but um, we're just going to go, go through it as, as much as I normally do. Uh, telling you how to survive in these terrible lands. And then here's the map of the scorn lands. So you can see that here is Meatlandia. And this is, I like how they did this little section. And these, obviously, this other area obviously gets spotlighted in the other books. And then it has this, which I like this kind of the, the map here. D5 and D6. It tells you where the Scorn Lords are and their different um, Scorn Scornopolises. So that's a little bit of a mouthful. And it's got your 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 distances down there. But cool little map. And I like like again, I like how it kind of takes out from there. 
but it does come with another mat, which I'll show you that at the end. I'll unfold that and, and let you know that this did come in with it, and I think in the back. And um, it's pretty much this blown up real big, which is pretty cool. But this kind of shows you where it is. It is unlabeled, which I like that because obviously, you know, you give that to your players and stuff. If they're, they're new to the game and new to the land, they might not know exactly where stuff is. So that's cool. And it's going to tell you there. So it's going to go into all the different cities. The Scornoopolises. So it's a bit of a mouthful, but it's pretty cool. But it tells you a good bit about it. Now, I wouldn't say this book is extremely, extremely just full of information about this land. It's really a primer for it. It would have to be a much bigger book. It is only 100 pages. But um, it does a good job at telling you what's what's going on in each place. Some good art showing you kind of how they, this stuff looks. You know, some of these different cities. And then it goes right into the geography. So, I mean, that's that's the cities, like the main cities that there. And these are going to be more than likely, a lot of these are going to be the capital of, of where the Scorn Lords are. And I'll talk about those later. They're a very big, intricate part of the uh, the book. So the geography of it, I like this. This reminds me of the old Middle Earth book, uh, Middle Earth role-playing book um, with the creatures. It shows you kind of the different types of uh, regions. Uh, and then you're going to have a bunch of encounters. Of course, it said that on the back. Encounter tables and stuff like that. And a lot of rolling up random stuff. So um, Scorn Lord agent encounter table. Standard encounter table. This is going to be one you're going to go to a bunch. Um, so, yeah, and it's going to tell you the different type of land types that are in this area. So, again, you can see the art, like the camel, of course. Yeah, then it's going to go into each one. Canyons, deserts, foothills, uh, you know, on and on. Art looks pretty good. Sand dunes. Of course, you can see there's a boat there in the sand. And, again, this is going to be a lot of dune. Uh, this gives me a lot of uh, dark sun vibes, obviously. And then we're going to go to the different type of people. What type of people are you going to face uh, in in the Scorn Lords, Scorn Lands, sorry. Different uh, type of turds, and people are gonna probably try to kill you, and maybe some that you can make friends with. Monster Honchos is pretty cool. Um, there's these, you can see it on the back, these uh, these ant guys here. I'm gonna say that's their name. I'm gonna try to say it. I'm not 100% sure. I wish it had the, you know, exactly how you're supposed to pronounce it. Mermiki, maybe? Mermiki? I don't know. Probably butchered it, but I apologize if so. So that's a cool thing. There's three new classes. So the Fade is the first class. Now this Fade class is really, really neat. So it says they look like other, you know, like normal humans, but they are elusive beings with the unique ability to fade from notice. Uh, they do not turn invisible. Others just fail to notice that they are there and forget they even met them in the first place. So they're very super sneaky. People forget about them. Uh, they have this forgotten ability. They can surprise attack. Obviously, they they can pretty much escape notice. It's difficult for them to do it, but they can just in pure daylight. Uh, they're almost like just things that not only do they not seem like they're there, but they may not even seem like they're there in your memory. And I just think that's a really that's a really neat take on kind of a stealthy class. And I think this picture, this piece of art here is really nice. So right, like seventh level, they were never even there. Um, and then like when they die, even them, they might you may not even notice their corpse when they die with a certain role that is made. So they're just truly forgotten type of characters, uh, but really neat. I mean, I think that's pretty interesting. The Mentalist is going to be your psionic type class um, with a bunch of psychic powers. And again, that's where the Dark Sun, you know, kind of comes and reminds me of that as well. Pretty normal here. Power, you know, you got your psionic powers and strength points and stuff like that. How they get them back. And then the Monster Honcho is very cool. If you see a big area of the book here, a big, big section for this class. They can speak with creatures, they can sense them, they can stun them, they can charm them, they can summon them. Um, even later on, they can charm them just with a steely gaze. And this is going to be probably a really fun class. I think all of the, cl the classes in here, are, the four classes that are here are really neat. It's going to have all your normal stuff for you know how they work and combat and whatnot. And then some good art here showing you some of the monster honcho. And then the mermiki, that's what I'm going to say. Um, now these are ant people. So one thing I really like about this is that they can fall. Uh, they may fall approximately 100 feet, 100 feet per level without harm. So it shows you here their falling ability, how far they can fall. And then they're, they've got strength times 100 pounds. So I like how they actually incorporated the way that an ant is with their ability to fall, their super strength, and then they have a super sense of smell. And they actually can communicate with other of their kind through smell. I think that's really neat. And uh, it's just an interesting interesting uh, class, really uh, a race, really. All sorts of uh, gear for how to uh, survive in the uh, the Scornlands. Venturing gear and weapons, armor, it can be piecemeal. You know, you can have a certain amount of just arms or legs, body. I really like that. Of course, beasts of burdens and stuff like that in your land vehicles. 
this is going to be something that, you know, you need, I would really try to, uh, you know, get this in the game. I think this is what really separates it from other games is going to be these vehicles and these, you know, they're powered by insects or mules or terror birds or whatever. The list goes on and on, dinosaurs, and having these kind of desert races, attacks, um, just a, it's just a neat aspect of the game. I think that obviously needs to be really represented whenever you play this game. How you can modify, like with weaponry and stuff like that, armor plating. Here's a great picture here of these. And they said that like normal vehicles that, that don't run off any type of like animal or person power, you know, they're quite rare. So it's not like there's, it's not like Mad Max. You don't have a bunch of vehicles with gas, like, you know, driving around and stuff. And then you got a section of psionics. Pretty, pretty normal here. Um, one thing I do like is it's got, it's got wild talents again. Much like uh, Dark Sun, how you know, everybody can have a type of magical, not magical, but psionic power. There's a possibility that you will have a psionic wild talent. So that's kind of cool. It's own little list. And there's a you know, brief section there with the different powers. It's a pretty good section, actually. And then it's going to go into the Scorn Lords. Now, this is the big part of, of this book and this setting. So um, the it tells you some history here about them. Long story short, they're extremely powerful pretty much demigods that rule over areas of the Scorn Lords. And they have a certain power that's to, unique to their to their own, um, you know, their own ability. And uh, whenever, even when they're slain, something kind of happens to them. They have this thing called the Chaos Shield. And um, it's pretty much, it says, an intangible and unseen but vastly powerful beneath the enswathing embrace of the barrier, there's a complete negation of all chaos magic. And some of this probably plays into some of the other books. Um, and it's just kind of like a, uh, it says an, it's an extension of the Scorn Lord's life force, the final gift bequeathed upon them by their mother. It cannot be dispelled while they live. So you kind of have to, you have to kill them, obviously, to weaken this chaos shield. But it'll create these chaos storms when you do kill them. So it's going to go into the first um, Scorn Lord. What now? This is, these are pretty neat. So it's going to tell you, you know, their unique person, their unique appearance and personality. They're, each one of them has a unique power, their Scorn power. Very powerful. All of these are super powerful. Uh, they all have this ability called Scourge. Pretty much, he can say, you didn't, no, you didn't, and he can cancel any attack or ability. This first, the first three uses each day are free. Additional uses cost one hit point each. So they, in essence, are just super, super powerful in this world. What type of environment they're in, encounters in their areas, what minions they send out, the strength of their army, what type of allies and enemies they have amongst the other Scorn Lords, and then how they might recruit the PCs. Uh... If, you, if the PCs impress him, he'll offer maybe something. And then his death stroke, pretty much all their death stroke, if you're able to kill one of these guys, very difficult to do, um, you're going to take their power, their scorn power, which I think that's pretty neat. Uh, but I will say, some of these, now there's a monster, um, like a bestiary in the back. Some of these have, guys have extremely, extremely superpowers that would be very detrimental to your, to your players should they encounter them and uh, piss them off, in essence. But some of their minions are also very strong as well. Not just with a lot of hit points, a lot of damage, but things that can just cripple your character. And I'll talk a little bit more about that one. Uh, so the thing about these, these Scorn Lords is this is a great faction play type aspect of the game. Where you, if you're running this, you're really going to want to try to pit these, these Scorn Lords against each other. You know, using their allies and their enemies. Uh, how you can pit them against each other to hopefully help you kill some of the other ones is probably one of the... Uh, the ways you can play this, but there's a lot of different options you can do uh, with these characters. And I do believe this is one of the, it's, again, it's more, more unique aspects and something you need to embrace should you check this game out is pitting these, these Scorn Lords against each other, you know, knowing how to work them, some good interaction, maybe working for them, uh, you know, going on uh, admissions for them. Here's another guy here. He's 11 feet tall. Uh, his, it says here, his grating voice is literally poison. This is his power. Um, and so for every sentence uttered, players must say versus poison or permanently lose 1d4 hit points. Now, this game, this this book here, the, the Scorn Lawrence, has got a lot of save versus something, and it's very powerful should you lose it. And it's definitely going to have that pucker factor uh, whenever you're going to have to make one of these saves because they could really be detrimental to you. Um, a lot of them have a weakness, like he's a he likes to booze it up. Um, so that's that. But again, all unique with their environments, their strengths, some of them, like, he fears no one, how they recruit, if they do at all. And then, of course, you can gain, like, his toxic tones, the power ability. Um, she's pretty cool. Uh, she lives kind of, like, in some mountain area. 
and she can pretty much triple in size. That's her power. And she gains like a giant form. And she loves her one of her weaknesses is greed. Again, alternate encounter table here, her minions, strength, uh, who she likes and doesn't like, and of course you can steal her ability. Uh, this one is really cool. Genera of the Heath. Uh, she's neat. Her ability bleeds darkness. From every wound flows a billowing darkness. If she is outside, about 15 feet will be covered. If inside her darkness fills any room. If she loses 10 hit points, only magic can pierce the darkness. If she loses 20 hit points, all present must save her spells or be permanently blinded by the darkness. So you can see, this is going to be really tough. I mean, you're not going to go in there with a group and just try to take her down. And if you do, that's going to be really detrimental to you. And at 30 uh, hit points, all present must save her breath weapon or be uh, subsumed by the darkness, becoming a patch of darkness themselves. So a lot of nasty save versus stuff in this. And again, everything that she's got. She's got demon dogs that are very nasty. Uh, pretty much anyone bitten by a, uh, bitten by one of these demon dogs, you save versus spells or change into a demon dog. So you can see these are, again, like I've said, very powerful. So you're not going to just want to go willy-nilly into there. There's Lubu. He's pretty cool. Um, Rabid Jack is interesting. He's got a bunch of these barren elves on his side. Um, he's got a blood rage where pretty much for every uh, for each point of damage, it gets him plus one to his damage total. So I mean, that's just that's just incredible. Um, he can summon up a D12 flying demon heads with metal jagged teeth. Uh, here's Uther of the Worm. This is one of the more stronger, more kind of uh, shit-headed scoring lords that a lot of people don't like. He has a gravity bomb. He can pretty much turn off gravity all around him except for himself because uh, he wears these bone boots that magically mesh to his fortress bone floors. Uh, so he's just going to like get rid of the, the gravity. And his whisperlings. He has whisperlings. They're very nasty. Belfor, uh, Belfor Glare, small creatures save versus petrification or is instantly mummified. So, I mean, okay. Clamp attack, they can do a, a big attack that pretty much knocks you down. So, hopefully you don't be a small creature because you're going to need to make that and be, you're going to be, you're going to be up to creep. And then it's got the bestiary, which is very good. It's got all of the different um, uh, creatures and minions that the Scorn Lords have. It has them more in detail here. So it's got their, their stats both places, but with this more filled out. Bone Collectors, Bone Fortress Guardians, these guys look pretty crazy. These Broggers are hilarious. They're pretty much sheep that if you touch them, they explode. Um, and that's detrimental. So, uh, yeah, you don't want to have that at all. It says it triggers an effect as determined below. So you roll this d20 and a lot of different things can happen. From you gaining a spell, a random spell. Uh, right here, the explosion leaves behind a wicker necklace bearing a dried thistle witch. When while worn, grants an OSR feat. So, pretty cool. Um, a wooden club spills out of the Brogger's innards. Just a neat thing there, so don't touch them. Uh, it goes on and on. And now dinosaurs. Dinosaurs play a huge part, so there's a bunch of di different stats for dinosaurs. You're gonna use those as vehicles. There's the fade. So it does, give, it, it does give you the classes as well. And I always like that whenever you have a class and then they give you kind of the, the stock uh, monster version of that so that you can use that character as a monster gladiators giant insects which we'll talk about here's kind of their basic stats we're gonna talk about that at the end it's very cool again i like that piece of art there and uh, overall like i said I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the art i think it's pretty cool monster honcho so it's going to tell you how to pick, play one of them and then here's the ant guys mermiki that's i hope that's what it is good lord the nega mages um they have blood of the scorn lords in their veins Sandworms, got to have those. Sonic geckos, terror birds. So a lot. You can see here there's unicorns, uh, wasteland yeti. There's the whisperlings that I told you about. Very cool. So they have, um, they can reattach their limbs, which is pretty neat. Uh, so that was just a small bit back there about the minion. Here, if you're a medium-sized creature and you're, you're facing down their baleful glare, you have to save her petrification or a limb withers and dies. So just looking at them, one roll and you lose a limb. That's detrimental to your character, so watch out for that. And then it's got uh, some neat things about some referee tools here that we've seen in a lot of other games, such as um, you know, different characters, looting the corpse, maybe some noises you've heard at night, setting the stage, helping you kind of get stuff going, why are the adventures here, people within the party, and then a, a, a village generator so for different villagers, um, the name of the village, uh, how many people are there, and then how to keep track of the water and your heat checks that you're gonna make right here. And then this thing here is scoring Lord tracking. Have you discovered them? Have you met with them? 
uh, how they're dealing with, like, one of the Scorn Lords, like, right when you pretty much enter his domain, he just, like, sends out doppelgangers of your characters, like, evil versions of your, of your player characters to try to go kill you. So, I mean, there's just a lot of strong stuff that these Scorn Lords have, and uh, the best thing is, is trying to probably pick the one that you want to try to befriend, and then hopefully work with them to take down the other Scorn Lords. And then it's got a little Scorn Lords quick reference right here for them with the page number that's very helpful, and then this great thing here, the giant insect generator. So there's a lot of, the whole place is infected with mega insects and it lets you roll up all sorts of different things about them. Their body type, their legs, their disposition, additional qualities, and this can give them more hit points, more armor, maybe they have wings, maybe they're electric attacks, stench spray. So it's just gonna create a whole bunch of different type of abilities. I mean, look at this, the number of legs, a thousand legs and how that affects their movement. Um, again, this is kind of their basic type of, of insect that they are, and then, some more qualities that they have here. So this is 2d20 up to 40. I mean, you could have, they could swallow you whole. They've got an acid spray, they're a chameleon. So just very cool they have that on the end cap to make a lot of different type of unique uh, giant insects. So there's that, we're gonna put that aside and we'll come back to it. So here's that map that comes with it. I'm just gonna show you that. So I can't show it all in the fit, but that, that's it. You can see it's not numbered or anything. It's not, but it has the mileage there are the miles that's going on here, the distances. Um, so I think that's a cool map that goes along with, with it well. And then with the Kickstarter, there's another book. It's called Scoundrels of the Scorn Lords. And this is 15 pages, and it has a selection of NPCs, as you can see here. So cool art for all of them, a whole bunch of different levels and stuff in different classes, different um, things that they like, dislike, their fears and habits, what type of gear they have. So obviously, you know, these are these are NPCs you could either use or they're also sure like some of these are hirelings, like how much per day it costs to, to hire them out. Um, or how much like if you want to just throw these into part of your story. So a good selection of NPCs. And then it has, um, let's see, keeps on going. And then it's got some, it's got some vehicles and mounts. So here's Billy and um, the best friend the land shark so gives you all the stats for these these uh type of mounts and vehicles very cool stuff a couple of just kind of generic scorn lands villages little, little maps here of how they would be that you can use and then little adventures packs um for the different type of classes if you want to just pay that and then get the, the gear that's that comes with it and then here's a lot of those influences i was talking about earlier from books and movies and music so bone tomahawk fury road mad max steel dawn Beastmaster, The Warrior and the Sorceress, and then books, obviously Dune, Tank Girl, Dark Tower, John John Carter of Mars, uh, Vampire Hunter D, and then some music. I like the Kroll uh, soundtrack. Of course, it's one of my favorites. Morrowind soundtrack, of course, is excellent. This is a way to keep track of your, um, your vehicles. And that is it. So, cool little book here. Collection of baddies, hirelings, and more for your Scourge of the Scornlands. And then, one more thing. The Solitary Scornlands. This came with it as well. It's a game of solo adventures set in the world of Scorn Lords. So you open it up. It's a little bit strange how it works. So pretty much what you are are you're a peddler, and you've got a bunch of uh, you've got a different class here. You roll up. You've got different trade goods. You're gonna roll those up, and it says your pet peddler wins if they collect 100 gold. So this is not a full like role playing game. This is just kind of like a little mini game. Um, and, or if they visit every hex in the map, there's a hex on the side of this on the one of the pages. They can retire to a life of re relative luxury. Your peddler loses if their wagon reaches zero hit points. So each of your, you know, you come up with different wagons and you're going to run into different creatures and different situations. So it tells you here how to work with the different hex map and find rolling up to see what type of train you come across, whether or not there's buyers for the stuff you want, repairing your vehicle. Monster counters are pretty much like avoid them or do damage to your, um, to your, your wagon. And then the terrain descriptions here which you're gonna then open up. So here's, you see how that kind of does. So that kind of opens up, gives you um, the different type of, of land types. And then here, you're gonna have your map right here. Keep track of your wagon, your, your wagon HP and your gold, your character class, what trade goods you have, and then the different type of rolls you're gonna make. Uh, desert mi mishaps and desert encounters. So it's gonna tell you where you need to roll on this or that, or maybe there's a village you can trade once with. So a very cool little thing that's added in to it uh, that was cool to find in here, in part of the Kickstarter. 
different monsters that just do straight damage to your vehicle. Um, so it's just kind of like a, can you get by? Can you make it through this, the, these scoring lands? Uh, you know, rolling up these random encounters and encountering these different creatures and stuff and villages to sell stuff. So then that just kind of goes like, boop, 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 and there it is. So this is going to be, the PDF is on, is on Drive Through RPG. I'm really impressed by this. I think it's really cool. Uh, I like how there's no like gas. It's just all vehicles with like mounts and stuff. Um, the art's pretty good. Um, like again, it's that, that, that mixture of kind of new and old. Um, it just seems fun, fun character classes. I like the fade a lot, monster honcho. All four of them seem pretty fun. And of course rules for dehydration and stuff. Uh, overall, it seems like, of course, it's got a lot, it's got a lot of, of random rolls, and um, that does help you kind of change stuff up, but, you know, on the, only 100 pages, it's, it's a very tight book, so you can't do everything, can't flesh things all out the way, you know, you would probably like if you really like this book. Probably going to need the two other books, which I'd like to get, take a look at, but there it is, Scourge of the Scorn Lords for Old School Essentials, um, definitely more, one of the more exciting books I've seen in a while. And because uh, I like all that stuff, I like Mad Max, I like Dune, I like Dark Sun, and I think this kind of fits that bill a lot. Kind of a, a neat fantasy melding of all those things. The Scorn Lords are very powerful. You're going to need to really, really work a lot, I think, to make those those characters come alive, pit them against each other, and um, really make some cool faction play with them. So there it is. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I apologize if I made a mistake on how anything said in this, but. Um, yeah, it looks like a fun game, and it's one I highly recommend. So, yeah, check uh, check it out, and check out the description. Like I said, it'll have the link to that drive through RPG, and I think it's just got the PDF on there. I'm not sure if it's going to have POD on there, because uh, you can get this from their website. I'll probably have their, I'll link their website, too, should you want to pick up a physical copy of it, and maybe check out the other books, which um, I might do that. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.